Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, witnesses. Um, <clears throat> Attorney General, good seeing you again. Um, you know, this is a great hearing, actually, and I know that you know some of our colleagues on the other side don't really want to focus on this sector or this what's happening here in our capital markets. And I honestly believe the reason why they either A, don't want to focus on it, or B, say it's a waste of time is because it helps them achieve a lot of the uh, political and social uh, ends that they want to see without actually having to come here and vote. So this works a lot better when you have small pockets of activist shareholders bringing a board proposals ad nauseum and they kind of overwhelm the, the, the C-suite, if you will, to accomplish these things through the corporate sector that you could not get through the legislative process. And so I see why they don't want to focus on it. I know a comment was made about belief in uh, anthropologic global warming, as it used to be called, or climate change, or whatever you, you want to say it is. Um, no, I actually don't agree with that statement. I don't think that the science is settled. And I think it's interesting in 2023 that people talk about settled science unless you're talking about physics and the laws of gravity and other things that are now tried and true over many, many decades. Um, but no, the science is not settled on that. But at the end of the day, what we're discussing is the real implications, the real world fiscal implications of ESG policy on our capital markets. If you look back to returns for 2022, BlackRock's own ESG screened S&P 500 ETF was down. 20% in 2022. It lost 20% of its money. And by the way, if you look at the fees for that fund, the fees are much higher than a baseline ETF just taking the S&P 500 as a basket of securities and delivering it to somebody with an IRA or if it ever got batched into any matrix of a 401k that might be out there, even one that might be available to pensioners in the state of Minnesota. That broad base. S&P energy sector ETF was up 50% last year, 50%. Now, the reason why it's easy for me to talk about this is because I actually was a fiduciary. See, I was an investment advisor. I did the job. I would never invest my clients in ESG funds because they are more expensive and the returns are not there. The returns have not been there. And I think the issue that we're starting, we're going to maybe potentially begin to run into is that because you have this chilling effect on the movement of capital into the quote unquote ESG firms, then by the sheer force of capital chasing them versus chasing other companies that either A, do not comply or B, do not conform to the ESG matrix, by their dearth of capital, by default, their returns year over year as a company is going to actually wither over time. That kind of chilling effect is not what the free market was ever created to do. That chilling effect is something completely different, which is an anathema to the free market. Mr. Allen, I know it's been talked a lot about uh, proxy advising and about, frankly, the voting procedures going on with these, uh, with these shareholder proposals. What would you think a good remedy for Congress would be to take a look at this and try to remedy this situation? Well, uh, there were several things that Congress could do. Certainly, I think uh, addressing Rule 14A8 and you know removing some of these social issue proposals from corporate proxy ballots and not requiring companies to have to keep, uh, put these out to a vote of their shareholders, you know, certainly that would help, particularly on matters that relate to ordinary business or that are economically insignificant uh, for a company. You know, as I mentioned in my written testimony, I think you know. Certainly, uh, there should be SEC oversight of proxy advisors. I think the SEC's proposal in 2019 uh, struck the right balance, and, and it called for a draft review process so public companies can review the accuracy and the completeness of the reports before their investors start voting on them. Because part of the problem is that there are a number of smaller you know, asset managers who don't put the resources into proxy voting and, you know, essentially, you know, vote, you know, blindly or in lockstep with the, the proxy advisors. That's, you know, unfortunate. It dilutes the voice of the other investors who are being more thoughtful, including the, the voice of retail investors who uh, own shares directly in companies. No, I totally agree. And I, and I think, look, when it comes to the question of materiality, when it comes to this stuff, at the end of the day, <clears throat> what is material is what matters to the financial operations of the company. 
because the investment is into the company itself, not into the environment writ large, not into the social system of the United States or the world for that matter. It is the going concern of the company. And with that, I yield back.